Hiya, welcome to Makeup and Metaphors, or welcome back if you've already seen some of my videos. I am Anya, spelt as such, lovely Irish name for you today. I am a secondary school teacher, I'm just in my seventh year of teaching, and I am a makeup enthusiast. So I've tried to combine the two to help people out in regards to the context of some of the most famous plays, novels and poems that are necessary for the GCSE so that maybe you can relax and get some passive learning in there while watching me attempt to create a full face of makeup. I've made this face of makeup today with Nikki Tutorial's new collab with Beauty Bay. Uh, along with a lot of new products that I've gotten over the last month that I got for my birthday. So if that sounds like something that you would be interested in, doing a little bit of revision while watching me attempt to make a good face of makeup, then keep watching. Right, let's get stuck right into it. I've tied my hair up to keep it out of the way. I've got so many new products to try today. We'll start off with this Il Mask primer. I've usually been stuck on the same products for ages. So I did a huge clean out of my beauty desk. I put up some pictures. I put like all of my palettes in these um, little boxes that I actually had from my engagement party and now I can see them all so that's exciting. Right so we're going to be talking about Macbeth which I've more than likely already said and the key quotes from it. Sometimes it can be really overwhelming to think well how am I supposed to have say 10 or 20 key quotes from such a long text and everything could almost be interpreted as being equally important. So I've taken at least one quote from each act from various different characters. And then if you have these, it's, it's just a good basis to start off with for basically your study, your revision, to make sure that you have lots of different quotes available for the actual um, extract question. So just while I wait for that to set, the first quote that I'm gonna talk about is when we first meet the witches in act one, scene one. And they say a very famous line, which is fair is foul and foul is fair. This is said a few times throughout the actual play, but this quote here, fair is foul and foul is fair, hover through the fog and filthy air. One of the first things they say, and actually it's the key to a lot of things in the play. So basically, things are not as they seem. Things that seem nice are actually dreadful and things that are dreadful actually aren't as bad as they seem. Here we can see the witches actually foreshadowing what's going to happen with Macbeth, with the prophecy. Obviously when he's first introduced, it's as a brave warrior who's succeeded with the Irish rebels and then with the Norwegians and how he was basically a savage warrior who was able to protect Scotland. But it's not as it seems. Fair is foul. And then when we first meet Macbeth from battle, one of the first things he says is, so fair and foul a day I have not seen, something along those lines. Um, and we can just see it basically being repeated. And usually when things are repeated, that's because the author wants us to remember them, that it's an important quote. So next we'll move on to act one, scene three. And this is after Macbeth has heard the prophecy from the witches, where they already prophesied that he would become Thane of Cawdor and King. Obviously he thought that this was just silly weird women saying things absolute nonsense but then he finds he finds out that actually he is now Thane of Cawdor as well as Thane of Glamis so he starts to wonder that perhaps their prophecy was correct so the quote is if chance may have me king why chance may crown me so we got the repetition of the word chance there so he's wondering is it up to fate is it up to destiny and then he also says at the end of that, without my stir. So he's basically wondering, I wonder if I have to give a little bit of help here. Do I have to stir things up a little bit, so to say? So he's saying, right, well, I've become Thane of Cawdor now. I wonder, do I leave it up to chance? Do I leave it up to destiny to become king? Or do I have to go in and stir the pot a little bit in order to help myself become king? I think this is one of the first times we can see him really kind of flip-flopping over the idea of killing King Duncan, you know, one of his good friends and his king, because he's thinking, oh, can I just leave it up to chance? Is it fine? Do I really have to kill him? Or should I help? Does it need my stir? Next is Act 1, Scene 4, and this is with the infamous Lady Macbeth. So this is in the soliloquy. Hopefully you know what a soliloquy is when you're just standing alone on the stage speaking out to the audience so that they can kind of understand what's happening in your head. And Lady Macbeth is reading a letter from Macbeth about what has happened, about the fact that he has become Thane of Cawdor, about the prophecy of him becoming king. So this quote that Lady Macbeth speaks is basically, I fear thy nature is too full of the milk of human kindness. And usually when we do this quote for the first time, there's a few giggles of like, oh, milk. But you have to think about what that represents, you know, milk, white, purity, children, innocence, 
So she basically sees this prophecy as Macbeth has to kill the king in order to become king. She doesn't really see any two ways about it, like that is the way that it will happen. And she fears that he's just straight up too nice which is a bit odd seeing as we've just heard about what an unbelievable warrior he is. He's cut someone from their nave to their chops, literally sliced them in half, put their head on the battlements of the castle. So Lady Macbeth really believes that there is just no way to receive any sort of position of power or authority without kind of being brutal. So if you have any milk of human kindness at all, she believes that there is just no way that you would be able to reach the heights necessary in order to become a high up, powerful person within their society. So do you agree with Lady Macbeth? Do you think that kindness is weakness? Okay, so while the contour, we're going to talk about Act 2, Scene 3. So this is after the killing of the king. So after Duncan has been slain in his bed by Macbeth and after the guards have been framed for it. Duncan's sons, Malcolm and Donalbane, start to fear for their own safety. Quite rightly, their own father has just been murdered in his bed and they are next in line to take the throne. Donald Bain says a quote, which I believe perfectly encapsulates how he felt about kind of all of the, I suppose you call them snakes, snakes in the grass that were around them at this time. The first half being there's daggers in men's smiles. So basically you can't trust anybody. And also the near in blood, the nearer bloody. So basically those who are even close to you or closest to you, maybe the ones that you can trust the least. It's almost like, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Like your enemies can be those that are closest to you sometimes. They would have felt so exposed because they were all in Macbeth's castle and obviously their father had just been killed. So they had no idea who to turn to. So next we've got a pearl of wisdom from Lady Macbeth when she sees the traumatic impact that murdering his good friend and king is having on his mental well-being. This is in Act 3, Scene 2, and that is things without remedy should be without regard. So basically things that we can't fix, we shouldn't even think about, which is so dismissive of her husband's suffering. So the last one I said, which seems like ages ago, because I have actually had to answer the door and stuff like that in between, is things without remedy should be without regard. So basically, if you can't fix something, stop thinking about it, which is just so dismissive of Lady Macbeth. Kind of like, yeah, well, get over it, it's in the past. Don't look back. I'm sure there's lots of quotes nowadays that are similar that like inspo Instagram pages put up like, don't look back, only look forward or something like that. So maybe it was taken from Lady Macbeth. And this is when Macbeth is starting to get his hallucinations. Well, in fairness, his first hallucination was, is this a dagger I see before me? Right, so the next quote we're gonna do is from act four, scene one, and it's the witches again. And this one is quite famous. And that is double, double toil and trouble. And then it would go on like fire burn and cauldron bubble. And then it goes on to all of the horrible things that they include in their potion. But again, this is the witches kind of foreshadowing the toil and the trouble that is about to have befall Macbeth. Macbeth is about to come back and demand some more answers from them. And usually that's not how like witches work. They're their own bosses. They're not just bossed around by anybody. So I suppose they see that this is about to happen and they're ready for him. They're ready to properly mess with him this time. So the main thing that I really wanted to do today is to mess around with the new Nikki Tutorials palette. So this was like her collab with Beauty Bay and we all know if we're into makeup how awful her collab with Too Faced went and the drama behind all of that. But this one seems to have been a huge success. So we're back at act four, scene one again with the witches when they are using riddles to try and make Macbeth feel as though he's invincible. The first one being, none of woman born shall harm Macbeth. And the second one, Macbeth shall never vanquished be until great Burnham Wood to high Dunsinane hill shall come against him. So you understand why Macbeth would feel invincible after this quote, but we know that this is exactly what happens because his murderer was not born of a woman, he was delivered via C-section. So he was delivered, I suppose, by the doctor. And Burnham Wood did come to Dunsinane Hill because the army used the bark and the branches from the trees as armor and walked towards Dunsinane Hill where the castle was. So it looked as though the entire wood was moving. So we move on to act five, final act of the play. So let's switch back to Lady Macbeth now in act five, when we start to see, or when we see her descent into madness, 
and it's almost like herself and her husband have completely switched roles. Now Macbeth is kind of delusional with power after he's felt this confirmation from the witches that he is basically immortal in his eyes that's how he took the riddle and the burden of what's actually happened is finally hitting Lady Macbeth and we hear her say all of the perfumes of Arabia shall not sweeten this little hand. She started to realise that she actually did play quite a huge role in these murders even though she didn't hold the knife and actually commit them it was basically because of her taunting Macbeth and like bringing into question his manhood that drove him to commit these murders and that made him into the man that he is now. So we see her like sleepwalking, repetitively, like compulsively washing her hands and now saying that nothing will take the smell of blood away from them. So I'm just gonna finish the other eye and do the liner off camera. Then I'll come back for the final quote just while I do the lips and finish off the look. And it's quite famous, so it starts off with Out brief candle, life is but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. So quite a downer <laughs> for one of the last key quotes of the play so this is from Macbeth if you can guess and he's just contemplating life obviously he's just figured out that it is inevitable that he is about to die so I'm just blending in the liner now and basically that we're like candles oh this is very cool packaging really weird for Mac you usually don't see something like this he kind of compares life to that of a candle that we can burn bright but then inevitably we run out he understands that because of what he's done, he is about to get killed, he is about to get slain. And that we're all basically, not to sound too depressing, but we're all basically insignificant in the the bigger picture. So he started to realise, I suppose, that he isn't this great, indestructible, immortal man that he thought that he was even a few hours earlier before the attack. I hope that some of those quotes will help you in the exam or even just the explanation of them writing them down in chronological order, any sort of revision is helpful and I believe that these would be a good basis to start building your quotes from. I know that I haven't uploaded in ages but hopefully this has provided some kind of help for you even if you're just interested in Macbeth or makeup or both. <laughs> so I hope to see you again real soon. Please consider following me over on Instagram which is here. So don't forget to like, subscribe and hopefully I'll see you really soon. Keep safe, keep inside, keep in contact with your family and I will see you soon. Bye! Oh, 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 oh,